Like all human cultures, the Egyptians told stories for entertainment and to convey a moral message. Storytelling in Egypt is undoubtedly as old as the civilization itself. But the earliest written stories we have date from the Middle Kingdom and were composed in Middle Egyptian, the classical language of Egyptian literature. Several of these have survived only in fragments, but three works have been preserved more or less completely. The oldest Egyptian story known is that of the shipwrecked sailor. It exists in a single copy, on a papyrus now in Russia. The story begins abruptly with a member of an expedition speaking to his leader. Their expedition has returned to Egypt safely, but apparently without achieving its mission. And the leader is hopeless. To cheer him up, the narrator tells him how he himself once triumphed over adversity. He had gone on another expedition by sea, and the boat in which he was traveling was destroyed by a storm, leaving him washed up on a deserted island. After spending three days alone, the sailor encountered a giant serpent. The serpent reassures him by telling him his own story. How he had persevered when his entire family was destroyed by a meteor. The serpent then predicts the arrival of a ship that will bring the sailor back to Egypt. When this prophecy is fulfilled, the sailor returns to Egypt together with a cargo of marvelous goods from the island. He presents these to the king and is rewarded with a promotion. The story ends with the narrator encouraging his leader to take heart from these examples of triumph over adversity. But the leader refuses to be consoled. The tale of the shipwrecked sailor is unusual, not only for this adverse ending, but also for the anonymity of its characters and for the literary device of a story within a story within a third story, similar to the Arabic story Kalila wa Dimna. By far the most famous ancient Egyptian tale is the story of Sinere that we covered in a previous episode. The story is set in the reign of Sinosret I and is presented in the form of a tome biography of Sinue, who was the servant of the queen. At the beginning of the tale, Sinue is on a military campaign in the Libyan desert, led by Sinosret, who at this point is still the heir to the throne. During the campaign, Sinosret's father, Amenemhat I, dies and Sinosteret is informed of that fact secretly by messengers from the palace. Sinure overhears the message. Fearing that rival factions will kill Sinosteret and his followers, he flees to the coast of Syria. There, he is adopted by a local sheikh and eventually becomes a tribal ruler in his own right. After many years, he is challenged to battle by the head of a rival clan. Sinure wins that battle. After this success, Sinure begins to long for home. His situation is reported to Sinoseret, and the king sends him a letter urging him to come back. Sinure rejoices over the pharaoh's invitation and returns to Egypt, though he is still afraid of punishment for doubting Sinoseret's ability to gain control after his father's death. Sinoseret pardons him gives him the property and station of a high official and orders a pyramid built for him in the royal cemetery. The elegance of its language was probably one of the reasons for the story's popularity. The tale of the eloquent is written in the third person. It's the story of a peasant from the oasis of Wadi Natran, northwest of modern Cairo, who loads his donkeys with produce and sets out for Heracleopolis. On the way he passes the land of a farmer, who covets the peasant's goods. The farmer has some linen spread out on the road at a point where it passes between his field and the bank of a canal. To avoid the linen, the peasant leads his donkeys through the field, and one of them eats a wisp of the grain. The farmer uses this as an excuse to seize the peasant's donkey as payment for his transgression. The peasant then goes to petition to the landlord, who is the chief steward in charge of the king's state property. The steward is so impressed with the peasant's eloquence that he reports it to the pharaoh. 
The king then orders the steward not to reply to the peasant's complaint, so that he will be forced to continue his eloquent petitions. The bulk of the story is taken up by eight more lengthy petitions, each of which is a literary discourse on the nature of Mott. After the ninth petition, the steward finally grants the peasant's request. His petitions are recorded on papyrus and given to the king. The story ends with the steward ordering the property of the greedy farmer to be given to the eloquent peasant. Middle Egyptian literature undoubtedly possessed many more stories than just these. There are significant similarities and differences among the great works of Middle Egyptian storytelling. Each of them was written not merely for entertainment but also, if not primarily, to convey a moral. The story of the shipwrecked sailor is about perseverance in the face of adversity. The tale of Sinuhe reflects a genre of early Middle Kingdom texts extolling the virtue of loyalty to the king. The words of the eloquent peasant are a vehicle for sermons on the nature of Mott particularly in relations between officials and their dependents.